just like it would do in real life if we're standing on a ball. For those of you who are interested in doing so, here's a simple test, and it doesn't require that you be a Freemason, a Luciferian, a Nazi, an occultist, or an atheist. You're traveling through to another dimension, a dimension of not only paranoia and delusion, but of idiocy. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of pure ignorance. Your next stop, the Batshit Crazy Zone. I'm sure most of you have probably heard about uh, YouTube's new demonetization censorship. So... I'm going to clean my act up a little bit and um so try not to try not to curse so much so I hope you enjoy. While I was looking into uh curvature math and looking into stuff like this, I came across an interesting word problem which ironically enough absolutely nullifies the entire ball earth thesis and it does so using their math. Check this out. All right. <clears throat> this is a website called mathcentral.eurigena.ca. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but whatever. Anyway, uh, you see the URL here. So they're talking about uh, how can I find the curvature per mile of the Earth's surface? And they give an answer right here. And you know they say after you do all the, the long form math, it ends up being 7.98 inches, or like we said, everybody's just kind of rounding it up to eight inches per mile. All right, but then it says, look at our response to Shirley to see what happens after the first mile. So you click on this, and there's an interesting question posed here at the top. There are two six-foot men. What would the distance be between them before one could not be seen because of the curvature of the Earth? And this is apparently uh, this person, Shirley, had a grandson who was stationed in Baghdad, Iraq, who was asking the question. And he goes to explain, you know, it's eight inches per mile, blah, blah, blah. But it's not, it, it you know, six feet is 72 inches. So uh, eight times nine would be 72. So you, you might be thinking, well, it's nine miles. The, the dude would have to be nine miles away for a six-foot person to be obscured at eight, eight inches per mile. Well, no, it's not a slant. It's a curve. It's a ball. So you can't just, you know, multiply eight times the miles. And when they go through all the Pythagorean theorem and blah, 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 you end up with three miles as your answer. Okay. So at three miles now, and we'll go back to our chart here, uh, assuming your eye level is at the ground, three miles, six foot is obscured. Now, this is what's interesting. And I'll create a little animation here for you to be able to visualize what uh, what I'm thinking here. Now, and I'll let you think this through with me. Okay, let's just imagine our world as a beach ball. We could imagine it as the Earth, but sure, okay, let's call it a beach ball. All right, the lines of the ball clearly point out what so many in the ball Earth camp are blatantly ignoring. No, they're not blatantly ignoring it. You're just ignorantly interpreting it. A ball, by its very nature, demands that its surface immediately begins to curve downward and away from any point on it. In every single direction, yes. So if we imagine Poser James here, I'm using a software called Poser, uh, let's call him PJ for short. If we imagine him standing on the beach ball... Uh, yeah, PJ is fucking huge compared to the beach ball. The problem becomes immediately apparent. Okay, he's standing on a ball. Immediately, the ball is curving downward and away from his feet in all directions. That's what a ball does. And it doesn't matter how big the person is, nor does it matter how big the ball is. Uh, it does matter how big the ball is. Because the smaller the ball, the greater the curvature from the point of reference. The larger the ball, the lesser is the perception of the curvature of the Earth. The curvature of the Earth is still there, but the larger and larger it becomes, the less and less it, it's perceivable. But let's go ahead and shrink PJ and enlarge the ball for the sake of example here. Now, notice the lines are still curving downward and away in all directions, even though he's getting smaller and the ball is getting bigger. This never changes with scale. The curvature does change. If we had used the Pythagorean equation for a Earth that was twice the size it is, 
or it was determined to be, then the curvature would be decreased. So yes, it does matter the size of the ball. Okay, now let's zoom into tiny PJ on the massive ball here and consider the curvature word problem that was brought up by this individual serving in Iraq. If PJ was six feet tall and he had a clone, who's also six feet tall, right, who walked one mile away from him, the ground his clone would be standing on would be eight inches lower than the ground that he was standing on, right? Again, the curvature math is eight inches per mile squared. So the first mile, one times one is one times eight is eight inches. So the ground from point A to point B, point B is going to be eight inches below point A. All right, you with me so far? Yes, Rob, we're with you. We're wondering where you're going with this, but, but we're, we're here. Now, if the clone had a clone who walked another mile away, that clone's ground would be 32 inches below PJ's ground. Why? Because it's 8 inches per mile squared. 2 miles, okay, 2 times 2 is 4 times 8 is 32. So the ground that clone number 2 is standing on is 32, almost 3 feet below the ground that PJ is standing on. And if we had yet another clone who was to walk one more mile, his ground would be 72 inches or 6 feet below PJ's. Thus, the top of clone number three's head would be even with the bottom of PJ's feet. I know, for some of you, the gerbil just jumped off the wheel. So let's look at it again. No, the gerbil is just on the wheel wondering where you're going with this. This time, we'll check it out from a different angle. Again, PJ's clone walks one mile away. The top of his head would be eight inches lower than PJ's. Another clone walks an additional mile, and the top of his head is then 32 inches below PJ's. The third clone walks one more mile, and at just three miles away from PJ, the ground clone number three is standing on is six feet below PJ's. Thus, the top of clone number three's head is going to be even with the bottom of PJ's feet. Now, I'm not trying to see whether or not the person can see the other person. What I'm trying to show you is the issue of the ground level. The ground level is the issue that I'm focused on with this example. Because if clone number three's ground is 72 inches below the ground that PJ is standing on, it's going to be physically impossible for PJ to look straight ahead or to the left or the right or behind him and ever expect to see the horizon at his eye level uh no he would see the horizon he just would not see the third clone of himself but yes no he would definitely see a horizon it can not be done yes rob it can be done and it has been done for nearly three thousand years i'm gonna say it again if you're just looking straight ahead there is no way the horizon could ever be at your eye level. What you're perceiving as a horizon, that horizon would be atmospheric. That would not be the actual ground that's, that you're seeing, and it's actually atmospheric at that point. Because when you stare off from the ground in that direction, the ground is already beginning to curve off. That's why you cannot perceive it. And if you are standing and you are looking out and you are looking at the horizon and you turn your head from the, for example, let's say you're facing north and you turn to the left or to the right, east or west, it's all going to look like there is a, a fine line, equal distance, it's an equal distance for as far as your eyes can see in every single direction. That is because, like you said at the beginning of this video, the ball has the curvature goes off in every single direction so that that means that as far as your eyes can see in that direction no matter where you turn your head the curvature is equal unless there's like a mountain or a valley or a canyon or something like that obscuring your vision or changing it if it was assumed to be all flat around you that is what you are going to perceive. So from your point of view, it is going to look like a flat surface. But that is perception. It is actually the curvature of the Earth is equal in every single direction.
when the ground you're standing on is immediately beginning to recede away from you in every direction, you're, you're standing on a point on a ball, supposedly, the ground you're standing on immediately begins to recede away in every direction 8 inches per mile squared. Now, I understand we're not on a perfect beach ball, but you actually compound the problem if you start using the argument, well, there are you know peaks and valleys and hills and mountains and plateaus and canyons and blah, blah, blah. All you're doing is pushing the problem further out, and eventually you, the ball earther who uses this argument, are the one who's in danger of falling off the edge of something. No, they're not using that as their argument. If anything, and I don't know who you talk to about this who use this as their argument, but I'm pretty sure that what they did was they used this as, like, it is something you take and factor. If on the earth, there's a lot of various plateaus and hills and mountains and valleys and blah, 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 all this other stuff. But if you were able to be on a relatively flat surface for, like, let's say, at least a couple of miles around you, this would be the ideal situation to have this experiment and see exactly the perception of the curvature of the Earth. Because you can extend that out only so far, and then you're going to have to correct the terrain back to that 8 inches per mile squared so that you can have your 25,000 miles circumference ball. No, it's not 25. It's, it's nearly 4,000 miles radius, but anyhow, it's it's 39.59. Or pair if you choose to... Um, go by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Not an elongated pair like you're showing in the background. It's, <laughs> it's, he was basically just explaining to us it's not exactly a, it's not a perfect sphere. It's actually kind of a little lopsided. <laughs>